Hello there. In this video, we have a wheel with radius R that is rolling without slipping. And we have, you know, like a sticker attached to the wheel, you know, or we can think of this as a pebble that's stuck to the wheel or something like that. The point is we're tracking a point on this wheel that's rolling, right? And we want to find that point's position, velocity, and acceleration right, as a function of time. This is a really good problem to uh, review kinematics. And with this notation here, you know, with this kind of faded out gray, I'm indicating the initial conditions, right, that this, uh, that this sticker here is going to start like at the base of the wheel and the wheel is going to, its center is going to start out at x equals zero at t equals zero. All right, so let's go ahead and just get right into uh, how we would tackle this problem. All right, so let me go ahead and start just by hiding this initial condition here. And we're going to call the, you know, the constant velocity that this center of the wheel is moving at. We're going to call that V, okay? And then, so the fundamental issue with this problem is, right, that we have this kind of complicated motion, that we have both at the same time, the center of the wheel is moving to the right, with you know constant velocity v and we have this rotation right so we need to decompose that motion basically right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to point to this location on the wheel with a position vector r of t right that's ultimately what we want to solve for okay and what we can do in order to decompose this motion is I'm going to introduce a frame, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and call this frame S here. This is the frame that watches the wheel like actually roll. And now I'm going to introduce a new frame, S prime, and it's attached to the center of the wheel, right? So it's actually moving with the wheel. It's always stuck to the center of the wheel. So what does S prime see? S prime purely sees the rotation of the wheel. It doesn't think that, you know, the wheel is translating at all. Okay? And so now I can indicate a position vector, you know, in the frame S prime, right? And this I'm going to call R prime of T. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to complete this little triangle that we're making here. I'm going to connect the origins of S and S prime together. And I'm going to call this, this little script R of T, right? And if we do this, well, our position vector R is very clear, right? We just, you know, add our two vectors together. You know, nothing easier than that, right? So plus R prime of T, just like this, right? Do you see that super duper clearly? So now we have this two part battle here. First, we need to find script R of T, and second, we need to find R prime of T. So let's go ahead and start by finding what R of T is going to be. So R is going to be equal to, right, is positive constant linear velocity in the X direction. So V T, you know, and of course, we could have some arbitrary initial condition X naught, but as a reminder, right, at t equals zero, the x position is zero of the center of the wheel. So effectively, we can just zero this guy out. So this is in the x hat direction. Oh yeah, and let's be super explicit. Let's call our unit vectors the x hat direction and the y hat direction, right? So in the x hat direction, we just have vt. And what about in the y hat direction? Well, this wheel has a radius r, right? So this is always going to be a constant, you know, the center of the wheel is always going to be R above, you know, the surface of our table or whatever it's rolling on, right? So we have plus R in the Y hat direction. Very cool. All right, so next, what is R prime going to be, right? That's what we need to tackle next. And I went ahead and I drew out, you know, a simpler picture of, you know, this is what S prime sees, right? Because it's always stuck to the, the center of the wheel effectively, right? So what it sees, you know, if I draw this position vector R prime, right? It's always going to have a magnitude of the radius R of the wheel, right? And it's going to form some angle here, right? Which I'm gonna go ahead and call it theta. And of course, this is a function of time because the wheel is rolling. 
Okay, so R prime, right? This is super duper easy. Again, reminder, X hat direction, here's Y hat direction, right? And so with this, you know, R prime of T, just use, you know, trigonometry is going to be equal to R cosine of theta in the X hat direction plus R sine theta in the Y hat direction. Nice and easy, okay? So we need to now think about what is, you know, our theta as a function of time. So let me go ahead and introduce that this wheel is rotating with some constant angular velocity omega for right now, in which case theta of t is going to be equal to, right? It's just a constant angular velocity. So this is going to be omega times t plus, you know, whatever the initial angle is theta naught. Okay, and I'll go ahead and think about it exactly what theta naught is in a little bit. But more importantly right now, now we need to figure out what omega is. I just introduced kind of this dummy variable for the angular velocity. But we need to rewrite this in terms of our linear velocity of the center of the wheel V. And of course we know that the wheel rolls without slipping, right? Which means that at the point at the bottom of the wheel, right, the velocity from the center of the wheel, right, the, the just the pure translation of the wheel, right, that gives some velocity, and then the velocity from the rotation of the wheel, right, so tangent to this point, we're going to have, you know, another velocity, omega times r, right, these two velocities are going to cancel out with each other in the, uh, in the no slip condition, right? So that this point at the bottom of the wheel has, you know, zero velocity at that point. Um, awesome. So usually I just use the rule without slip condition up to a sign. So what do I mean by that? So let, let's go ahead and think about this. The center of the wheel is moving with a positive velocity, right? And the wheel itself is rotating clockwise, which in physics, you know, by convention, that's the minus direction. So a positive, you know, linear velocity corresponds to a negative, you know, rotation. So that opposite sign relation, I need to introduce a minus sign into this equation. Okay, that's usually how I, uh, you know, do this for practical purposes. So omega is equal to minus V over R. Awesome. Right, and so plugging this in, we're going to get r prime of t is equal to r cosine minus v over r t plus theta naught in the x hat direction plus r sine minus v over r t plus theta naught in the y hat direction beautiful and of course what is theta naught let's just go ahead and deal with this right now so let me just go back up here and look back over at our initial conditions right so right if we call this angle here is zero then of course this point here starts at this angle minus pi over two right nice and easy clockwise is minus uh in physics so you know let me go ahead and put in here and here let me go ahead and put in minus pi over 2 minus pi over 2 and now what i want to do is you know i have these negative arguments let me just make these arguments positive right so this is going to be equal to we just use properties of trig functions r cosine v over r t plus pi over 2 in the x hat direction and then we get a minus r sine v over r t plus pi over 2 in the y hat direction all i did i just made the arguments in my cosine and sine positive cool and so now effectively we're done right because i have r prime and i have my script r so what's my total motion going to look like right i have to add these two together so that is going to look like, so let's start with the x direction. So I have vt plus r cosine of v over rt plus pi over 2 in the x hat direction plus, right, an r times, I'm doing this for the y direction now, 
So r times one minus sine v over rt plus pi over two in the y hat direction. Look how easy that is. Okay, and if we just take like one extra minute, we could graph this parametric equation here and we see this really nice shape. I just set r and v equal to one and graphed it for three cycles and we see that we get this cycloid here. That's what this uh, shape here is called. So our particle on this wheel is going to trace out a cycloid as the wheel rolls around. All right, and so from here, I just need the velocity and the accelerations of this point on the wheel, right? And we know that, you know, like velocity is defined as the time derivative of my position, right? And so all that we have to do is just take this time derivative, which, you know, is really not that bad, right? So derivative of this is just going to be v minus, I have to use chain rule, so pull this v over r out, it's going to cancel with that r, so minus v sine of v over r t plus pi over 2 in the x hat direction, right? Derivative of a constant is 0, and so we're going to get here minus, we have to chain rule this guy, so minus v cosine of v over r t plus pi over 2 in the y hat direction. Okay, great. We have what our, you know, velocity is going to look like. And of course, you know, our acceleration a of t is just going to be the second derivative of our position with respect to time or the derivative of our velocity with respect to time. And so this is going to give us minus v squared over r cosine v over r t plus pi over 2 in the x hat direction minus v squared over r sine of v over r t plus pi over 2 in the y hat direction. And so then what is this entire thing here equal to? Well, remember or recall, right, that this whole thing, when we solved for r prime of t, look at this, it's the exact same form here up to a constant, you know, r. So this thing down here, right? This is r prime of t divided by the radius r, right? And so this entire thing is going to be equal to minus v squared over r squared times r prime of t, or, you know, like if we recognize this is the angular velocity of the wheel, minus omega squared r prime of t, which makes sense, right? Okay, let me pull back up my picture for s prime, right? This guy makes sense because effectively, if I'm at some location r prime, and I'm rotating with omega, right? Then what direction is my centripetal acceleration? It points inward, aka in the minus r prime direction, right? And what's that magnitude going to be, right? Just like high school physics knowledge, we know that, you know, centripetal acceleration has the form omega squared times the radius r. And that's exactly what we're showing here. Right, and so effectively, right, we have our centripetal acceleration. And again, we're happy uh, physics students here. Um, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. If you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, you know, let me know in the comments and consider subscribing to the channel. You know, I really do enjoy and appreciate hearing people get on board. This is a lot of fun. Um, but other than that, thank you so, so much for watching.